So perfect. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Deltome, for joining us this morning. Um, for the audience out there, Professors Deltome and Gustin are, are really international leaders in uh, neurotomy. Um, they've studied the, uh, the the comparison of this versus uh, versus Botox, and really done the best outcome studies that I have seen. And it's a pleasure to have them joining us this morning. So this morning, really, Dr. Deltome, uh, Dr. Gustin is not available, but um, let me turn it over to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Brown, for the introduction and the invitation. Uh, as you said, I will present alone because Thierry Justin is uh, in the operative room because of an emergency. So I, I will discuss about the treatment of spastic foot with selective tibial neurotomy. Uh, I'm uh, the head of the PMNR department. I do uh, patient selection and recruitment and Thierry Justin uh, do uh, surgery. And after that, I, I, will, I do follow up of the patients. So uh, uh, neurotomy is focused on spasticity as a toxin uh, uh, and uh, it's indicate in case of spastic foot, in case of focal impairment, after uh, uh, improvement obtained by means of diagnostic nerve block. If the does, diagnostic nerve block doesn't work, it means uh, weakness or uh, shortening, and it's another part of the subject. It's not really a spasticity treatment, which is uh, uh, requested. So uh, uh, the first step uh, when we have a spastic foot uh, candidate for a patient candidate for surgery is to perform a diagnostic nerve block. And it's my part of the job. Uh, for this, I need a, a, a ultrasound machine. It's not mandatory, but it helps to locate big nerves and to uh, see uh, artery and vein as nerves are always closed from artery and vein. Uh, I need a conduction uh, needle for anesthesia, uh, like uh, our anesthesiologist colleague are using, a portable stimulator, and in my practice, I'm using an EMG apparatus. It, it allows me fine tuning uh, and also H reflex monitoring, which is useful. Uh, as, a, as a trick for you, uh, when uh, you have a, a, a muscular contraction with a, a duration of stimulation of 0.01 millisecond and three milliampere, this means that your needle is in close contact with the nerve. So you can be sure you are at a good place. So uh, a video is still uh, a good way to, to, to show how it works. Uh, this is a, a candidate for a surgery and she had a, a spastic uh, left foot. And so uh, I put a, a landmark here at the upper part of the head of the fibula and uh, then an horizontal line in the middle of the popliteal fossa. I will locate it the middle of the popliteal fossa and one centimeter below and externally, this is the entrance point for the soleus and three centimeter below the entrance point for the tibialis posterior. So I know where I have to implant my needle. And so this is my EMG apparatus, the H reflex electrode for monitoring. Uh, this is the head, the uh, uh, cathode and the anode for uh, rec uh, related to the needle. And so I can uh, uh, therefore implant the needle. Uh, you have to push a little bit because it's not a good needle because it will not destroy anything inside. And then I will uh, send a stimulation. And you, as you can see, you have a, a solus contraction. Here I can obtain the solus monitoring. And once you have a, a contraction, with a low intensity, I will inject and see as soon as I inject, the muscular contraction disappear. It's also a good trick when uh, the muscular contraction disappear, uh, once you inject immediately, that also means that you are uh, uh, well placed. And so uh, here are uh, the uh, main uh, uh, target nerve locations, solace motor nerve, we publish in the, in the archive and Alessandro Piccelli did the same recently with ultrasonography with the same results. This is according to the surface uh, anatomic landmark out of the fibula, uh, 10 millimeters below the horizontal line, uh, 15 millimeters laterally and 30 millimeters deep. And therefore you will put your needle at that place exactly at the, at the level of the cellus uh, uh, nerve. Uh, 
If I target ear, I will be in the tibial nerve, but I will induce sensory disturbances in the foot. And if I do my nerve block ear, it's a global tibial nerve. I will block the gastrocnemius, the soleus, the tibialis posterior. It's not a selective way to assess the patient. So I will not know which uh, nerve uh, uh, theory I have to treat. Here is the same for the tibialis posterior. As you can see, the needle a little bit below and the typical movement induced by the tibialis posterior contraction. And here also the surface anatomic line, the, the location 50, 45, 8. So below the horizontal line, the same laterally and a little bit more in deep. This is a CT scan view. Okay, why do we have to do and to promote a nerve block? Uh, four reasons. The first one is to determine the respective responsibility of each spastic muscles. Uh, you block the soleus, it works, it's okay. It's not enough, you block the gastrocnemius, the tibial posterior, and so on. So at the end, I, I can know which muscles are involved in the deformity. To differentiate spasticity from fixed contracture, to assess muscle strand and spastic co-contraction, and most importantly, to predict the functional improvement uh, in order to determine goal with the patient. May I ask a few questions about this? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, what, what is the amount, how much are you injecting when you do these blocks? Oh, good, good, yes, I didn't, uh, usually one to two milliliter, not okay. more. Okay. Uh, because if you inject three to four, it will diffuse to the tibial nerve and induce sensory disturbances. But I that's what I was, I was wondering, how, how you could avoid that. Um, so, so because yeah, of the yeah. small amount. Uh, I prefer to inject a, a small dose, yeah. uh, even if I have to renew it. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. And, and secondarily, uh, many times I see two very separate branches to soleus, a proximal branch that runs with the lateral gastroc and then a distal branch which is uh, closer to the tibialis posterior, or sometimes the toe flexors. Do you do exactly. two different injections, or how does that work? You, you, you have, in fact, two branches for the soleus, the, the, the uh, superficial one, and we suspect that the superficial part of the soleus is the more involved in the echinus deformity. That's the one we inject with toxin. And the deeper part, uh, the nerve is usually located in the nerve trunk, or a little bit below, and it, it, in our expert experience, it's less involved in the deformity. Okay. So usually I target the, the upper one. Okay. And so let's come back to uh, the patients. Uh, I have blocked CB4, a sustained clonus at fast mobilization. Slow mobilization does not induce any clonus, while five minutes later, even the fastest mobilization doesn't induce any uh, clonus or resistance anymore. So soleus is the target muscles. Second question, is there any fixed contracture? You can see before and after. I'm able to obtain a neutral ankle and it's quite difficult. You see the, the fascia, which is banded and my face also is banded. And I, here, five minutes later, I obtain a 10 degree muscle dorsiflexion. So it, it makes a difference between lengthening or not lengthening. And this means also that the block act also at the non-neural part, on the non-neural part of the deformity. Uh, it doesn't uh, suppress spasticity, reflex spasticity, but also uh, non-reflex uh, uh, spasticity. So I, I can, I know here that the patient doesn't have uh, any contracture. Uh, usually by means of nerve block, we improve of 10 degrees of passive dorsal flexion. After I think that it, that's very helpful. We haven't been doing that, but I like it. H how long does it take you to do this? Uh, for, to do the nerve block, it's one hour. One hour assessment before, after, to take video and so on, usually one hour. Okay. Okay, the, the, the third one, very interesting, uh, uh, is to assess the uh, antagonist weakness, the tibialis anterior weakness. So before, the patient is not able to actively dorsiflex her foot, while uh, immediately after, she, she is able to do it not because uh, she recovered from her tibialis anterior weakness, of course, but because the soleus also co-contract. And I know that in such case, the patient complained about spastic co-contraction at the level of the soleus. 
I note it clearly answers the question, uh, what about the uh, tibial ischemic weakness? And you, we can do the same uh, in a standing position. And you know before, she's not able to actively dorsiflex while she's able to do it after. We are also able to uh, assess the agonist strength. Is reducing soleus muscles strength will uh, impact uh, the patients? And in such case, the answer is no, because she is able to, to actively uh, perform a, a plantar flexion because the gastrocnemius are preserved. And usually, uh, we think that gastrocnemius are important for propulsion. And finally, and you, and you always preserve the gastrocnemius? Not in every case, but if, uh, if the, the gait improvement is correct after soleus block, uh, I will not uh, uh, follow by a gastro. But it's, if it's not enough, I'll do it after gastro or tibialis posterior. According to the, uh, each time I do a nerve block, I assess the patient. If it's not enough, I renew at another location. Perfect. And finally, and most importantly, what about the gait functional improvement? As you can see before, she had a slight echinus in stance phase and also a knee recovatum in the middle of the stance phase while after the nerve block, she had no echinus in stand phase and most of all, no knee recovatum. So in such case, soleus is a spastic muscle. You have no fixed contracture. You have soleus spastic co-contraction. And when you decrease spasticity, you uh, improve gait. So clearly we have to treat soleus spasticity by means of toxin or by means of neurotomy. Another example of difficult case, you have a, a, a virus uh, in the uh, swing and stance phase. It's quite difficult to know if it's a tibialis anterior overactivity or a tibialis posterior overactivity. Once you perform a tibialis posterior block, you obtain a complete correction, which means that tibialis posterior is the key muscles. And after toxin injection, you obtain the same results. As it's a dystonic patient, it's not a candidate for neurotomy, and so I continue to treat him with toxin. Another uh, typical example, one uh, patient with a left echinovirus foot. Uh, once I block the soleus and uh, tibialis and uh, gastroc, you see a clear improvement. I continue with a tibialis posterior, but she complained about a valgus uncomfortable valgus and lack of propulsion. The reason why we decide only to treat with uh, neurotomy at the level of the soleus and gastroc, as you can see, to obtain the same result as after the nerve block. So it's, a, it's a really important for the uh, preoperative assessment. A more classical case, you can see a, a clear knee recovatum in the stance phase of gait. After uh, the nerve block, uh, you have no more knee recovatum, which means that the soleus is a key muscles. Uh, Philippe Deck published this in, in Lancet some years ago. Uh, I inject the patient first, and you can see he's able to, to walk uh, on his foot. Uh, uh, after uh, I inject with toxin, so that the patient is able to see what uh, is the improvement in his daily activity. And finally, we did perform a neurotomy. That's usually our strategy the block to understand, toxin to uh, assess during some months so the patient can test it at <coughs> home, and finally, neurotomy. And as you can see, he's also able to walk on his two. The same at the level of the obturator nerve. It's a strumpel lorrain disease, a spinal cord patient with a adducted, adducted hip. First, I will uh, perform an adductor longus nerve block bilaterally. It improves followed by a gracilis uh, nerve block. We are able to do it selectively. The patient was happy. And then we did perform a neurotomy. And that's the day after surgery before the patient came back home. And as you can see, the result is quite the same as after the nerve block. So uh, what is very interesting with the blocks is that it predicts the spasticity reduction and ankle gait kinematic improvement obtained after neurotomy. We published this uh, with 30 uh, stroke patients. After block and after neurotomy, we assess. And clearly, when we perform, I perform a nerve block, I can tell the patient after the neurotomy, the result will be this. 
yeah. not more, not much, not less, this. And it sounds like th this is more successful than, than Botox pre-op for giving you an accurate representation yes. of what neurotomy in my is. In my practice, uh, block and neurotomy are more effective than toxin. Uh, and that, and not that, so, so, so I used to use Botox to predict outcome of neurotomy. It seems like your block is a more accurate predictor. Is that correct? Yes, because it's more effective. Yeah. With neurotomy, you never decrease all spasticity, which yeah. is the case with neurotomy and with a nerve block. And so the patient is much more impressed after the block. And so frequently I do perform a block uh, and I inject toxin, I re-inject, I re-inject. And after sometimes the result is not quite good. And the patient renew me. You remember doctor, two years ago, you did perform a, a block and it was much more impressive. And so I, I see my video back and finally we operate the patient. I agree with you. So, here I start the part uh, that Thierry normally uh, have to uh, have to present to you. It what it's easy with our team. You say Thierry, and everything you succeed because our we are both Neuma and Thierry. So neurotomy, as you know, it's a partial and selective section of the motor nerve branch innervating the spastic muscles. The goal is to decrease the stretch reflex, uh, uh, whose conduct spasticity by mean of a section of the 1A and 2 fibers, uh, but uh, we uh, are not able to differentiate 1A and 2 fibers from alpha fiber inducing a transit weakness. And most importantly, we spare sensory fibers and sympathetic fibers in order to avoid uh, sensor sensory deficits and pain. So at the level of the motor nerve where uh, the neurotomy is performed, you can see that uh, 1A, 2, and 1B fibers, as well as alpha and gamma fibers are uh, closely related. We are not able to differentiate one to another. So when we perform neurotomy, we are not able to cut 1A and to uh, uh, avoid and to, to spare alpha fibers. Okay. Uh, the goal of the neurotomy is to section the 1A and 2 fibers, which conduct uh, the stretch reflex. And uh, this explains a permanent reduction in spasticity. And uh, it, was, it is correlated to uh, H max and max uh, ratio decrease, which is uh, an electrophysiologic parameter related to spasticity. That's the goal of the neurotomy. But we also cut alpha fibers, uh, inducing transit paresis, which may decrease propulsion, for instance. But these fibers will uh, uh, re-innervate by means of collateral re-innervation as every peripheral nerve injury, sciatica or uh, peripheral nerve trunk. And therefore, uh, you will recover uh, muscle, voluntary muscle strength, but also involuntary muscle strength like dystonia after eight to 12 months. So spasticity is permanently decreased while voluntary uh, contraction is transiently decreased. That's uh, the message. So uh, in case of tibial neurotomy, it's indicated in case of loca locally disabling spasticity with a foot instability pain or uh, autosis uh, uh, needed, uh, resistant to medical therapy. In our practice, it's not a candidate for uh, baclofen, for instance, uh, with a, a good result obtained after nerve block without any major contracture, even if in such case, we frequently combine neurotomy and tendon surgery, tendon lengthening. It's a classical to perform neurotomy and Achilles tendon uh, lengthening. We will act at the level of the reflex spasticity, uh, much more than level, at the level of the spastic dystonia, uh, which is a, a contraindication, pure dystonia, it's a contraindication to neurotomy. Our first patient were, was a pure dystonia, and it was a nightmare from the beginning to the end, so never again. Um, uh, we suspect an efficacy on a spastic co-contraction, we uh, some frequently perform a toxin before in order to assess the, the patient. And if more, uh, more and more, we uh, operate patient quite uh, uh, early after three or four months post-stroke 
because we suspect that toxin will not be enough and we, we, we have to go uh, further and to improve the patient. So at the beginning, we were waiting one year, uh, no more and more physical therapists push uh, uh, us to, 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 to operate patients. So uh, the technique is neurotomy is performed under general anesthesia. The tibial nerve is dissected, and you can see the tibial nerve, the solus motor branch, the tibialis posterior branch, and here is a operative uh, uh, solus nerve uh, uh, stimulation. After that, uh, Thierry will cut the nerve in two parts to obtain a 50% neurotomy over uh, one centimeter length under operative microscope. And he cut the nerve in two parts uh, to obtain a 50% neurotomy. And if request, uh, he can cut uh, still more to obtain a 75% neurotomy and so on. Importantly, some teams, I don't know uh, how you proceed, some teams uh, uh, target uh, the nerve very distally uh, uh, at the place it uh, uh, approached the muscles. Uh, in our practice, we do not do this. We operate uh, at the level uh, of the trunk, not inside the trunk in order to avoid sensory deficits due to dissection, but here at the level of the solus nerve uh, proximally, and it works quite well because proximally at that level or distally, the alpha and the 1A fiber are always mixed uh, both together. So, but some teams proceed like this not in French, in France particularly. So we do not perform this in uh, hospital day, uh, even if it's possible, theoretically. Uh, it's a two or three days hospitalizations. Patients are all allowed to walk the day after without cast with a physical therapist. And we perform early uh, physical therapy with a special uh, message to perform intensive stretching during two years, because every denervated muscles is at risk of uh, contracture. And so in order to avoid contracture, we ask the patient to perform stretching, which is quite easy uh, for the patient to, to do it uh, uh, in standing position. And so after that, we, we perform a strengthening and most of all, gait improvement. Uh, the patient, uh, the, the, the spacity is uh, corrected. The patient has, uh, has to learn to walk better, longer, faster, and so on. What do you accomplish during that hospital stay? Uh, ours go home the same day. Is, is it for the therapy? Uh, no, it's because of a, a question of organization of Thierry Justin. Uh, so, uh, because we, he, he want to, to keep the patient one night at the hospital. So he's coming on uh, Thursday, operated Wednesday, and he leave on, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, so on Thursday, so that's uh, the, the classical uh, message. But theoretically, we can do it in a, in, in a day hospitalization. But you know, the cost in Europe is uh, much less than in America. It's not the same at all. So, so, so uh, which nerve to cut? Uh, it's an important point. Usually, solus is quite systematically uh, treated. Uh, gastrocnemius in 50% uh, of the case, if solus is not enough after nerve block assessment. Uh, but uh, if we treat both, we have a risk of uh, lose, uh, to lose foot propulsion. Uh, the tibialis posterior is target in case of varus in stance phase. And we assess also with uh, a tibial, uh, uh, with nerve block. Flexor allusis longus quite systematically because when you correct a kinus, you increase two cloud, uh, cloud tau, sorry. Uh, but we never uh, treat flexor digitorum longus because uh, uh, they are located inside the nerve trunk and they are uh, mixed uh, with the sensory deficit. And uh, at the beginning, we have some neuropathic pain, so we stop to do it. And I know that the Lille team in French um, uh, reported 30% uh, of neuropathic pain after such kind of uh, neurotomy. The reason why we prefer to correct cloud outs uh, with tenotomy, which was also simple, in order to avoid sensory deficits. So uh, another uh, important question is how much uh, section do we have to perform? And so we did perform an electrophysiological study uh, with uh, the most important is 
to we assess the motor unit number estimation. This is a technique where you are uh, you are able to count the number of motor unit inside the muscles. And uh, before uh, the patient has uh, 157 uh, units, after the nerve block, uh, the same, because it's quite logical, we, we, we have no denervation. Two months after, uh, uh, no, no, sorry, sorry, it decreased 50% after block. This is a number unit uh, of number, number unit. After neurotomy, uh, 80% neurotomy, we decrease uh, the motor unit number of 80% approximately uh, 90% a year in the case. And one year later, it's the same. So you, the, the number of motor unit reduction is related to the extent of the uh, neurotomy. When you cut 50% of the 80% of the ner nerve, you decrease 80% of the motor unit. But when we did perform a nerve block, we only decrease of 50%, but the result, functional result was the same after both techniques. So until that moment, we cut less. And so to be concrete for you, usually soleus neurotomy is 66%, two third. A gas stroke is 50%. Uh, tibialis posterior is also uh, 60% or 50%. It depends on the extent of the spasticity. Uh, and flexor allusis longus, usually it's 100%. You simply cut the nerve to make it simple. And so what about the long-term result, which is a critical point? We published this article in the archive some years ago. We assess without control group longitudinally 30 patients uh, with uh, soleus neurotomy, tibialis posterior and gastroc in 50%. And we assess the patient after block and two months, one year and two years after neurotomy. We observed a dramatic reduction in spasticity uh, as assessed by means of the modified ASHRAE score uh, here at the level of the triceps. Okay, so after the block and also two years after surgery. Uh, the muscle strength at the level of the triceps, of course, decrease due to the nerve section, but reappear two years after surgery at the level of the preoperative assessment. So which confirms that the weakness is transit and the tibialis anterior is improving uh, with time due to the rehabilitation process without any solus co-contraction. Uh, the echinus in swing phase of gait is also a little bit improved, but most of all, the echinus in stance phase is dramatically improved. You have a a seven degrees of plantar flexion before, and two months after you have a minus six, so a six degrees in dorsal flexion, and this is uh, uh, constant over the time. So the same for the various deformity, especially in the stance phase of gait. So two years after neurotomy, we have a, a permanent reduction in spasticity and a permanent improvement in the uh, ankle uh, uh, stance phase position. More recently, one of our students, Benjamin Bolens, uh, did perform a systematic review. We had at that time, it was in 2011, 40 valid study, all longitudinal non-control studies uh, with more than uh, uh, 300 patients. And uh, you have to note it's all French team, French and Belgian team. So we are waiting that our American colleague publish more about neurotomy in order to diffuse it all over the world. Because if you want to diffuse some technique all over the world, you, you need to publish with American team. It's my opinion, you know? Okay. And so what uh, uh, Benjamin, Benjamin found was in agreement with our personal research, a decrease in spasticity by means of Ashworth score, an increase in passive and active uncle dorsal flexion, a decrease in pain and uh, cutaneous lesion due to the stance phase position, and uh, the tree study, uh, which was using HMAX and MAX reflex, confirmed uh, a decrease in this spasticity electrophysiological ratio. Gait, which is the, the final goal, uh, was improved 
by means of clinical or video recording in most of the publication, but some using gait analysis also confirm such uh, improvement. Uh, the echinus and virus was decreased, especially in stand phase, and the uh, walking speed was increased in four uh, uh, publications. So in my practice, walking speed is not the goal. It's the main goal. Uh, the same for the toxin. The toxin doesn't prove that you improve walking speed. Uh, so the, the, the goal is to improve comfort, to decrease pain, to improve foot stability, to be able to walk without orthosis. But walking speed, maybe, but it's not the, the primary outcome for sure. Uh, the step length, uh, length and cadence stay unchanged. And the knee recovatum was also decreased in some case, which is a classical, as you, as you see before, uh, uh, pattern. As in the rehab field, we are always using the ICF classifications, impairment, uh, uh, disability, and functioning. And we have some uh, uh, improvement of activity using functional scales like uh, River Mead and Abil Loco, which is a Belgian one, also uh, improving participation and uh, uh, quality of life by means of satisfied stroke. For sure, when the patient has less pain and is able to walk without shoes, this uh, quality of life is improved, but we have to assess this more in deep. Complication were muscle weakness, okay, a lack of propulsion. So in every case, uh, uh, when we perform a soleus, new, uh, tibia exposure and gastroc uh, neurotomy, uh, uh, I say my patients that they have to expect some lack of propulsion at the beginning after the neurotomy. Foot stability will be improved, but don't worry, foot propulsion will be transiently decreased. Uh, sensory uh, deficit uh, in six uh, paper, neuro including neurotic pain, dysesthesia, hypoesthesia. Uh, in our practice, it's always when you target the flexor gitorum longus or when you perform uh, a trunk uh, complete dissection. So until the moment we didn't select target flexor digitorum longus, we had never uh, be confronted to sensory deficits in those patients. And foot uh, deformity recurrence appear in 12 patients in those publications, maybe because the neurotomy was incomplete or maybe more frequently in our practice due to uh, muscle contracture. I don't know why, but some patients after neurotomy and with good stretching, will not present uh, contracture while some will present. Maybe because of some different patterns, spastic dystonia or so on, I don't know, or more spastic myopathy, uh, traumatic brain injury patient have spastic myopathy with uh, fixed contracture more frequently, I don't know. Uh, you mentioned uh, the use of botulinum toxin. And so when you look at the literature, uh, uh, the comparison between tibial neurotomy and toxin. We have one uh, French team publication with 34 stroke patients and a follow-up of one year. And uh, they inject with toxin, assess, and then perform neurotomy and assess. And they uh, noted that neurotomy uh, provide a, a significantly greater improvement than toxin in terms of echinus spasticity, passive ankle dorsiflexion, walking speed, uh, object uh, orthosis needs and subjective benefits, which confirm your uh, personal impression, Justin, that uh, neurotomy is more effective than uh, uh, toxin. But never, nevertheless, it's still a good test when the patient is not very confident, confident to go to surgery, I inject with toxin and so he can uh, feel what can be achieved. And finally, uh, he's convinced, and, uh, but we have to inject higher dose of toxin as the effect of toxin is clearly dose related. Uh, that's also the reason why we did perform the only one randomized controlled trial uh, comparing a neurotomy and toxin. We have uh, only few randomized controlled trial in the field of spasticity. Uh, except uh, uh, toxin uh, and medication. And uh, we uh, recruit patients candidate for neurotomy and uh, ask them to participate. They have 50% of a change to be injected with toxin and 50% of the change to be uh, treated by neurotomy. 
but they cannot choose, of course, it's the principle of randomized control trial. And Benjamin, always the same, was a blind assessor. So he, he was uh, in, in the gate lab and he didn't know what uh, treatment was achieved. And so we recruit eight patients in the toxin group and eight in the neurotomy group. And the patients were assessed at two months, six months after the treatment. And what we observed was that the neurotomy achieved a greater effect uh, than toxin on spasticity reduction assessed by the modified ASHWA scale, but also with uh, an objective measurement, which is the LPAT, which is a machine uh, which uh, assess uh, the muscle resistance, uh, while the ankle gait kinematic was uh, improved in the same way in both groups. So the conclusion was that neurotomy is much effective than toxin to reduce spasticity, while the gait improvement in this uh, study was quite identical. But the main message was that neurotomy is as effective as toxin, which is the treatment of the focal spasticity with the highest level of uh, evidence. And so uh, we also published this uh, um, narrative review comparing toxin or uh, selective neurotomy in the annals two years ago. Uh, and our conclusion was that toxin, of course, has the highest level of evidence in the literature and the largest range of uh, uh, indications. But uh, toxin is, uh, however, reversible and expensive uh, in Europe too. So uh, it seems less effective than neurotomy, also especially for the spastic echinovirus uh, uh, foot. So uh, the reason why we support selective neurotomy in case, of us, in case of spastic foot, toxin has the advantage to be reversible, uh, to be simple to uh, achieve, uh, but uh, it's reversible, so you have to renew it and we are able to target every muscle with toxin. While neurotomy is, uh, you are not able to target uh, every muscles and it's a, 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 a permanent technique. Uh, I prefer to say that neurotomy is permanent uh, instead of being irreversible frequently. Uh, doctors say that surgery is irreversible. I prefer to say that surgery is permanent as I prefer to imagine that my marriage is permanent instead of irreversible, if you know what I mean. <laughs> irreversible is when something goes wrong. Fortunately, my marriage is permanent for many years now. So uh, another important point we, we, we can discuss is which treatment uh, according to the type of muscle overactivity. You know, the patient may present pure spasticity with a clonus, for instance, solus clonus. You patient may present spastic dystonia is a typical end after stroke. Uh, the dystonia is a muscle contracture at rest, while spasticity is only a muscle contraction when you induce a passive mobilization. And when you look at the end after stroke, the patient is always in this position. And when you implant an EMG uh, a needle in the muscle, you need, you, you hear a typical uh, noise about EMG activation and muscle contraction. So without any stretch, a patient contract. And so this is not a, a, a reflex overactivity, but it's a discharge from the brain to the muscles. You have also a spastic co-contraction, as I showed before, which is an appropriate contraction of the muscle, for instance, the solus, when you perform a, a voluntary activation of the tibialis anterior. So spasticity and spastic dystonia are assessed passively by uh, the examiner, examinator, while the co-contraction is assessed actively when the patient tries to do something. So toxin and neurotomy are effective in both cases, and neurotomy is the best technique for spasticity. In case of spastic dystonia, be careful with the neurotomy because we may be confronted to uh, recurrence. That's our opinion at the forearm. In case of spastic co-contraction, we suspect that neurotomy is effective. We did perform a retrospective review of all our patients. We presented last time uh, uh, at a French Congress, and it seems that neurotomy is also effective to permanently decrease uh, co-contraction. Good news. But we don't know uh, really the effect of, uh, on associate reaction. 
associate reaction is a muscular contraction at distance from another uh, muscle activation. For instance, this is the elbow flexion, flexion uh, when the patient is walking, when a stroke patient is walking. Uh, we don't know about spasm, uh, which is quite good in indication of ITB. <coughs> and uh, neurotomy is not a treatment of <coughs> contracture of spastic myopathy. We need tendon surgery. So some, some case here, a very uh, old case with a, a severe echinovarus foot. The patient is not able to walk any shoes. Five minutes later, like a magician, the nerve block allow us to walk. So she was very impressed. And we did perform a, <coughs> a neurotomy, excuse me. This is a little stick of wood in order to avoid overstretch because we, we were confronted to one Achilles tendon avulsion. So when I suspect a small a tendon retraction, uh, I put this uh, little stick of wood. And six months after neurotomy, you can see the result and look at her hand. She's moving her fingers to joke with me because she, she saw I was happy with the result. And so she was joking with me while, when walking. So you can be sure it's her real gait because when she's joking with me, she's not allowed to sing to walk uh, like the best she can. And I have the same video 15 years later and I asked the patient to, to renew this little movement of the end and it's still the same. Another example of uh, MS patient with a severe echinovarus foot. After the nerve block, uh, the result was so impressive that it's the first patient, the only one patient, I did renew the nerve block with a placebo block in order to be sure that it was really a uh, spasticity and not, a, I don't know, historical pattern and so on. And so we did perform a neurotomy to obtain this result. She is now uh, in a wheelchair with an ITB pump because the disease progress, but uh, her uh, triceps is still uh, without any spasticity at that level. But uh, she was able to walk for uh, many years with more uh, uh, facilities. And here you can uh, confirm with a podometry uh, assessment. Here is another complex case. It's a young uh, uh, boy with a very uh, severe clonic foot, uh, a spontaneous foot all over the time. It was quite difficult for him. We did perform an ITB test first because he, he was so clonic, but uh, the baclofen decreased uh, peroneus strength. So he doesn't feel comfortable because he was, uh, the ankle was in more various position. He was less comfortable. So uh, I did perform a nerve block to obtain a quite good improvement. And after neurotomy, the uh, result is obtained. And as you can see, the gait uh, walking speed is largely improved in such case. It's not in every case, but in some case, it's, it, it's, it can be achieved. Another case of a uh, uh, right stroke patient before, after block, you can see uh, a better foot stability. After neurotomy, she was able to walk without crutch. And we add some uh, functional electrical stimulation, which allow uh, her to walk without echinus uh, in stance and in swing phase. So uh, neurotomy uh, should be combined with a rehabilitation process in, in, in every case, to my opinion. So our conclusion is that neurotomy is simple. I mean, simple for a neurosurgeon who is able to operate complex things in the head and so on. It's safe, uh, permanent, and uh, in Europe, quite inexpensive. Uh, the efficacy is demonstrated in the literature, even if we lack randomized control uh, study. And then I, I cross my fingers that uh, your project will, will be accepted, uh, Justin. The result of surgery is predictable by means of nerve blocked. And uh, really, uh, I have to promote this. It's really a magic technique for this. Uh, we uh, promote stretching postoperatively for two years, which is quite simple to apply, low cost. We learn to the patient. Uh, neurotomy is frequently combined with tendon surgery. 
Achilles tendon lengthening, uh, tibial anterior tendon transfer, or two flexor tenotomy. I didn't present case, but it's uh, because it was not the subject. We focus purely on neurotomy. The patient selection is very important uh, at the beginning, and the goal of surgery uh, has to be defined with the patient. Uh, to better walk means nothing, because for a patient, to better walk is to walk before stroke. Uh, so we, we have always concrete goal to be able to walk barefoot, to decrease pain, to reduce uh, or to remove orthosis and so on. And so I think I, I respect the time. Uh, I thought it was not uh, so fast, so we have some time for question and uh, answer or discussion. That, that was perfect. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I still have a lot of questions for you, but um, I, I'm jealous about your, your nerve block because I feel like that would help me tremendously, particularly in the mild cases. Um, without that, and I, I've tried, uh, when I first went to uh, travel to learn this technique, the, the group that I visited was doing a bolus in the popliteal fossa of a large amount, and they were causing an anesthetic foot, and it didn't seem like a great technique to me. So I came yeah. back and I began to use EMG to predict. Uh, EMG each of the muscles when they would stand and see which activated. That didn't, uh, that, that wasn't a great predictor for me because even the gastroc always activates, but it doesn't necessarily contribute. Um, and so I, I, and then we went to Botox and the Botox is not nearly as dramatic a result as, as the neurotomy. And so that wasn't necessarily a great prediction um, of what was gonna happen. So to have somebody learn the techniques that you're doing, I think would be very, very helpful. Yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, the only, uh... Uh, the only indication to do a, a bolus tibial global nerve is to differentiate spacity from fixed contracture. But I have to confess that with my uh, expertise, I know uh, clinically if it's a fixed contracture or a spasticity. So uh, I, I do it less and less. I agree with you that toxin is not enough yeah. uh, because frequently the patient is a little bit disappointed and do not come back. Yeah. Uh, you say, it doesn't work, so goodbye. While the nerve block is so impressive that the patient uh, uh, want to 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 achieve this result, okay, I I want it. Yeah. Uh, so the technique is not so complex. We we can uh, connect together uh, to to learn this. Uh, but the, the problem it, it takes times, uh, yeah. and you need to assess the patient. What so what I recommend and what is usually the case in the French and Belgian team is that that the neurosurgeon work with the rehab doctors. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably the reason why neurotomy is not so largely performed, because you need a, a rehab doctor able to perform nerve block and to assess the patients. You need to, to have a, a neurosurgeon who want to do neurotomy, uh, and you need to have both who trust them together. Yes. Because you need to, I need to trust a surgeon, and the surgeon has to trust me. Uh, and But when you have this, it's really magic. I have a daily contact with Thierry, uh, and so it's uh, okay. That, that, and, that's really nice, yeah. I never visit Boston, so I can come to Boston if you want one day to, to learn to you if you want. Or we we you would love it. We, 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 would, we would love to have you come out. I'm going to have to get one of my partners to commit to learning your technique first, but then we definitely bring you out. Because it, it's, it's exactly the same. Uh, you know, it's exactly yeah. the same as the, the one you learn, uh, uh, maybe in Lyon or something like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you have to, to put the needle not at the trunk, but yeah. a little bit below. And yeah. you have those landmarks and you have to stimulate. Okay, I, I'm sure that you, 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 you should be able to do it even without, without me, my, my, my listening. But uh, okay, I, I learned it in, in when I, I passed uh, four months in France. Uh, and my boss showed me twice, yeah. and then I continue to do it myself and so on. So it's not so, but it takes time. So that's the reason. And, and some, some other um, thoughts. When I began these, these techniques, um, I was a bit more timid. I would take 50% or 60%. And in some of these very, very spastic legs, by four to six months, it has returned. And a part of that may be they're getting poor therapy, but... I had gone from that to in the very spastic legs, just completely dividing tibialis posterior, completely dividing the soleus branch, which has been very effective. 
Um, but I, it was, I look at your scale of recovery of strength in those muscles, I don't think I'm recovering the same strength you are. And so it, it's, it's a delicate balance deciding how much to take and how much not. But it, are there cases where you are completely dividing or you're always maintaining some of the nerve branches? Uh, we we always maintain we the, the percentage is the minimum is fifty percent. Yeah. Usually it's uh, sixty six to third, and yeah. sometimes in very severe we do it a little bit more seventy five something like this. But as you saw, we we even with eighty percent section we recover muscle strength, but don't forget that in our group uh, only fifty percent of the patient had gastroc neurotomy. Yeah. So they all have solus neurotomy, yes. but only 50% have gastroc neurotomy. And it makes a difference uh, okay. for voluntary. Uh, and so the, in, frequently, we do prefer to uh, perform neurotomy at the solus and maybe to lengthen the gastroc because the, the gastroc overactivity is a little bit less uh, yeah. a stretch reflex. It's more... Uh, non-neural spasticity or uh, I don't know, uh, maybe a little dystonic parts. And so lengthening is probably a, also a good way to, to, to achieve. But uh, the risk with the lengthening is that the risk of weakening is much more higher. Yes. Uh, yes. Because with the neurotomy, the risk of uh, inducing a high level of weakness is very, very low. Even if you cut 80%, the risk is quite low. But if you lengthen two centimeters too much, the tibialis, uh, the ten Achilles tendon, yes, patient may be completely uh, paralyzed uh, at the triceps. So, yeah. uh, On the uh, toe flexors, um, we uh, have been dividing the soleus arch to get distal and can often, not 100%, maybe 60, 75%, get a specific toe branch that has no sensation in it. Um, so in those cases, we've been dividing that even in that case, though, there are a subset that will recover their toe spasticity because there may be another branch distal to that. So, you, so your technique of just sending that for, for tenotomy may, maybe is the easier one, but when it's there with us, we divide it, look for it, uh, divide the soleus arch, look for it and, and include that also. And, and surgeon do perform, a, a percutaneous stenotomy, you know, uh, is a section of the tendon at the, at the base of the tooth, yeah. and it's it's really simple. You have no cast, uh, and so uh, uh, you uh, I'm a lucky man because I put the dog and the cat in the operative room because Thierry Gustin, the neurosurgeon, is uh, uh, working with Delphine, uh, who is an orthopedic surgeon, and they operate both together, okay. uh, which is quite unusual. And so, but I'm sure that Thierry w would be able to do the. Uh, the, the, the two uh, flexor tenotomy himself, because it's quite simple, but yes. my respect for uh, uh, his colleague, he, he, he let her do it, but it's also a simple way. Now, I have one question for you about a complication we've seen recently in, in, in two patients. Um, and that is typically when we do the neurotomy, the, they experience that the whole leg becomes a little bit more relaxed. The whole leg is, is less tight. In these two patients, one of them had multiple sclerosis and the other one I believe was a stroke they described that their thigh muscles developed more tone and the leg, proximal leg became more stiff and they were walking slower after surgery. And I have trouble understanding why that happened. I wonder if you have any experience with that. Yes, when uh, you have the combination of the stiff knee gait, which is a, 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 a decrease of knee flexion in the swing phase of gait, quite huge, uh, frequent in stroke patient, and a spastic foot. When you decrease a spastic foot, uh, you have the feeling that the stiff gait is increased. Okay. Uh, uh, you have two reasons for this. The first one is that you correct one pattern, and the only one who stay stiff gait uh, appear more impressive while it is not. Yeah. But uh, that's true that in some case, uh, when you decrease the foot propulsion, you will increase the stiff knee gait. Yeah. Uh, Alberto Eskenazi, you surely know him uh, from uh, Philadelphia, uh, famous, already explained uh, the reason why uh, two times, but uh, 
uh, it's too too complex for my little brain. But uh, yes, when, when you decrease food population, you may increase stiffening gains. That's possible. Okay. But some patients uh, 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 present or uh, describe a decrease in proximal spasticity when you treat distally. Yeah. More common. Uh, the contrary uh, is also possible, but. And, and when you have bilateral spasticity, will you treat them at the same time or do you yes. stage one and then the other? Yes. Yes, at the same times. Yes. But uh, I did perform bilateral nerve block before. Okay. And so that, that what is very reassuring for the surgeon is that yeah. uh, uh, the, the uh, nerve block assessment is performed bilaterally. Do you think that they would, they would then experience this stiff knee gait, if that's a potential, with the nerve block? R repeat your question. Would they, if they had a potential to develop this stiff knee gait, or, yeah. or uh, would they notice that with the nerve block? No, the patient yeah. will be so happy with his foot yeah. that he will not analyze. Uh, you may see it, uh, but if necessary, we start to do uh, 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 neurotomy at the level of the rectus femoris and okay. rectus center medius with quite good results. You have really? a French team who, who do it, yes. In case of Stephanie Gate, we, we start to perform gate uh, uh, EMG analysis. It's quite strange. Uh, in case of stiff gate after stroke, the rectus femoris and rectus intermedius are active in the swing phase of gait when they have to be off. Uh -huh. But in the stance phase, they do not contract at all. So they work when, when, when it's not uh, necessary and they do not work when it's necessary. Okay. But the vastus lateralis and the vastus intermedius are completely in the opposite way. They are off in the swing phase and they are active in the stance phase. And you, you determine this by EMG? Yes. Yes, I put a, a, an EMG needle okay. uh, and I ask the patients to, to walk uh, on this, uh, uh, near my EMG apparatus. And the, uh, I start to do it for one year now and every patient is quite the same. Rectus and uh, rectus are on in swing phase and off in stance phase, which is quite reassuring because when you do perform a neurotomy at that muscles, you're, you are afraid to induce a, a quadricep weakening, yeah. which the risk is quite low because they, they do not work. Uh, okay, in, but in because you're phase. only doing the rectus femoris only. Uh, usually rectus and intermedius. And intermediate. But once again, I do perform a nerve block before. And, and to, you, can be, you can be specific to those two muscles? Yes, in your block. yes, yes. We okay. have also landmark at the rectus femoris for this. It's much more complex, but it's possible. Okay. I, I have not offered that procedure previously, but I have, we've certainly had discussions about it. So that's very, very helpful. Yeah. But well, thank you very uh, much for your talk. We've come to the end of the hour, but that was excellent. You, you all have done really good work to show that this is a great procedure in the right context with the right patients. And, and we're happy to learn from you. So thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. My pleasure. It was really a pleasure. We have to stay in contact for the future so, because uh, you surely have to, 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 to learn a, a lot to us also. Though, so. Absolutely. So if this grant doesn't work out, we'll do another one, but we'll definitely stay in touch. Okay. Let's cross right. for Picori. Yes, sir. Take care.